Hey everybody, welcome back to Horsin' Around School Days at MTRA. If you missed our first lesson last week, my name is Jenna Roviera. I'm one of our therapeutic riding instructors and also work on fundraising and development. Um, I wanted to follow up our first anatomy class with a little bit more in-depth going into the legs of our horses um, and wanted to share some fun facts. Um, just a little bit of information, the average horse carries about 58% of its weight on its front end, on its front legs, and then 42% on it in its hind legs. Um, just kind of some different information. And I'll throw out a couple more fun facts here in between. Um, also, if you missed the first lesson or you don't know me, um, I'm working from home and um, I'm in like withdrawals from not being at the barn so I've got to dress this up and I've been seeing the Easter Bunny pics that they've been sharing because you know it looks like the Easter Bunny's making his rounds at MTRA so I had to get festive break out an Easter tutu and my Easter Bunny ears so so excited for this Easter week even though I'm working at home and missing the herd and all our wonderful riders and volunteers. Uh, with that being said, I wanted to go over what we covered in our first anatomy lesson um, on our trusty drawn horse and I can also show you, I have a different briar model today that I can show on, but we covered the withers or right here. Um, it's the highest part of the horse's back at the base of the horse's neck and going into their rump. Um, we covered the crest, that's that middle arch in the horse's neck, their pole, which is the uppermost part of their head, in between their ears. can't know if you see that. Um, the horse's muzzle, again that's that nice soft fuzzy part of the horse's mouth area. Um, and then we covered their shoulder and the cannon bone which is that bone down here, or on us people, right there. All right, so with that being said, we are going to go into legs today. Um, I, I broke it down into the front legs and the hind legs on the horse, so we'll have a little bit of both. Um, one more fact before we get started, horses are able to sleep uh, standing up or laying down and they do that standing up by locking their leg joints so I just can't imagine trying to stand up I would definitely be tipping over like a cow in my sleep <laughs> um, and so with that we will start on the front end we covered the other day the shoulder in the horse that's right in here and that takes us down into the horse's elbow which on our little briar model here you can kind of see it here it's this bone right there and then our forearm that's the upper part of the horse's leg right here which takes us into our knee so our forearm is in between our elbow and our knee the knee works just like us it gives that that range of movement and then that takes us into the four cannon bone. The four just means front. So the cannon bone that's in the front, that's that same bone we have in the front of our leg. And that cannon bone then takes us down into the ankle, or what we call the fetlock of the horse. And of course I would pick a little trusty draft horse, so it's going to be hard to see this horse's fetlock, but it's the ball at the back of the horse's ankle. Um, that's the fetlock and in between that horse's fetlock, that ankle area, in their hoof, which is their foot, is what we call the pastern. On my little trusty drawing, this is the fetlock. This area right there is going to be the pastern and then our hoof. The one thing that's in between the pastern and the hoof, where the pastern meets the hoof, is the coronet and if if um, your horse doesn't have a lot of hair like this guy 
you can almost see a little line as well. So um, that is the front area of our horse in terms of legs. Um, one more other fun fact in between is that baby horses, which we call foals, are able to stand up. They use their legs within hours or sometimes even minutes, um, but definitely in their first day they stand up, they take their first steps, some of them even bounce around. Um, but can you imagine if babies stood up, human babies stood up their very first day? It takes us a long time to be able to stand up and use our legs for the first time. I have a little grandbaby and he, uh, he's been using his legs to stand up, but he just started taking off walking and now it's like we've gone from zero to 90 in no time at all. But definitely he wasn't standing up and walking around on his first day. <laughs> all right. So back to our anatomy lesson, on our hind end, um, I started out with our hip. Uh, the point of our horse's hip is going to be out here. So on our little briar model here, which again, this guy's pretty big and round, but his point of hip is going to be right about here. And you can kind of see it there. Um, the hip then goes down into the stifle. And that's going to be this area right here, going into the top of the leg. Um, you can kind of see a point of it when you see the real horse, but you're going to get the stifle, which goes in between the stifle and the hock. This is the horse's hock. We have what's called the gaskin. Um, so we have our hip, well our point of the hip, our stifle, then our gaskin is this piece of leg in between, and then that is called our hock this bone at the back. I think of it like an elbow, but the hawk is actually related to like a human ankle, even though it's higher than what our ankle would be. Um, we have the hawk, and then again, this bone in between the hawk and the ankle of the horse is the cannon bone. So we call that the hind cannon bone, um, so it doesn't get confused with the fore cannon bone. We have the cannon bone. Again, then just like the front of the horse, we have our fetlock. That's the ball at the back of the ankle. Our pastern, which is in between the ankle and the foot, or the hoof. That's the pastern. And then we have our coronet, which is where the pastern meets the hoof. And then last but not least, we have our foot, or the hoof. Um, Anybody know how many hooves a horse has? That's an easy trick question. Now, uh, one other fun fact is that horses, when they use all four of their legs and they gallop, on average, a horse gallops around 27 miles per hour. That's pretty fast, but that's not near as fast as they can go. The fastest recorded horse running has been 55 miles per hour. That's pretty amazing and uh, I really don't think I could run that fast. I don't even think I could, I don't think I could do 10 miles an hour. <laughs> Maybe for like a quarter of a mile. Mm, probably not. Um, my bonus question for the day is where is the chestnut? And I don't know that this was in, I think one of the drawings that we posted last week has the chestnut on it. Um, so if anybody watches this and can tell me what the chestnut is and where they are located on a horse, um, you'll get extra bonus points. Ooh, the wind is blowing and my computer might go away. <laughs> All right. Um, one other thing, we'll be posting a video probably this weekend or at the end of the week. Um, Miss Catherine is going to be bringing, posting a video with the next lesson. Um, but in between all of our lessons, I wanted to also consider reading um, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse by Charlie Mackesy. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this. Let me hold it up close for you. 
this is a really sweet and full of wisdom book. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. Kind of think about it. Let us know if you've heard of it and if you guys would be interested. Um, I'd love to tie this into our horse and around school days here. All right. Hope you all have a beautiful rest of your Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in, and we will talk to you all again here soon. Bye.